Welcome to No Apologies on Beck, where we are unafraid to speak the truth. I am your host, Rick Becker, our co-host, co Lori Hintz. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. We've got a great show tonight. We've got uh, a little bit more on COVID, but very interesting part on COVID, where we're comparing North Dakota and South Dakota, mandated state, non-mandated state. Right. We've also got a really interesting guest. Dr. Steve Ning. Oh, I'm yeah. I'm looking forward to that, too. I think you're going to enjoy what he has to say. A little bit of uh, brain food. Yep. Nutrition for our brain. Yes. And some stuff with Iran. I know. It's deep and it's, complex. <laughs> it's not really deep at all. It's pretty Isn't simple, it? okay. actually. It's been going on for millennia. So, but it'll be interesting. I, I promise. We'll, we'll, we'll finish strong. Right. <laughs> okay. So let's talk COVID. It's very interesting. We've got now... It's been uh, November 13th, Friday the 13th, when uh, Governor Burgum declared a mask mandate and then other mandates like early bar closings, restaurant closings, uh, social distancing and so forth. Um, it, it went effective on the following day for masks and about three days later for the rest. Now, interestingly, our numbers have been going down Nicely. Very, uh, Very this nicely. is a nice curve. This yes. is like flattening the curve nice right. and slow. You're right. Just and, and so uh, the, the thing is that now today, I will say, we're recording this show a day early. Right. So when you're watching this, it's very possible, likely, that Governor Burgum has had a press uh, uh, conference in which he's talking about the executive orders with mandates and whether he's going to extend them. So that's going to be very interesting. I would love to have uh, waited, but we're unable to do so. So we are anticipating what he may be saying. Now, I will virtually guarantee you that he is going to give credit to the mandates for the curve going down. But I think that the data is very, very clear that that's not the case. So if we bring up a graph, um, let's, we can show exactly what's happening in North Dakota with COVID cases. You see the, the big spike up there, and then it's coming down rather dramatically. Now, if you look at when the mask mandate was implemented, we have our next graph. The, the, the red line there shows where it's implemented. Now, it may look like, uh, wow, that did a wonderful thing. But there's, there's a couple of interesting points. Right. The first is that it, the graph was actually starting to plateau. That curve was starting to become flat even before the mask mandate was put in place. The second thing is that you notice a very steep decline immediately, right. immediately after. But then a pretty good spike right after that again, though. And, and, there, and there's a little shoulder, and that happens. Uh, it's, not, it's not uncommon at all. But if it, let's take the next chart. If you look at this chart, November 21st is the very first date that we would expect there to be any change whatsoever because of Governor Burgum's mandate, because there's an incubation period. Right. The numbers don't go down on the first day. Correct. There has to be an effect, and that effect has to reverberate throughout the state, and then you need at least at least one incubation period, so seven days, we'll call it. Right. And what you see is that the very first time that this mask mandate could have had an effect, the curve was already plummeting. Right. <laughs> now, I talked with someone today who acknowledged that there are some uh, epidemiologists that are indicating that, well, it, maybe it wasn't entirely the mask mandate. It was other stuff, too, like the local mask mandates. And I said, well, wait a minute. If we look back at what happened <laughs> after the Fargo, Grand Forks, Minot, right. and Bismarck mask mandates, the numbers, the numbers skyrocketed. Right. They went way up. So there was no effect for local mask mandates. The statewide mask mandate happened after the curve was plummeting. So we have to ask ourselves, really, what's going on here? And I think what's happening is what we've been saying all along. With the testing changes. There's testing changes. But then there's also the, the aspect that it's natural. It's natural. And let's pull up the next, next chart here. Let's take a look. South Dakota has no mask mandate. And there we have North Dakota in purple, South Dakota in green. And they look really similar. They look don't extremely they? similar. Wow. So if indeed Governor Burgum and the others are going to take credit, then what is it that should be given credit for South Dakota? Right. It's not. It's the natural history of what happens with this disease. Our numbers are dropping a little bit faster than South Dakota, which may go to your point about testing and changes in testing. Sure. But for the most part, 
the, they're nearly identical. So we could have had the same effect without any mask mandate, without forcing restaurants and bars to close early, without forcing restaurants to have 25% capacity then change to 50%. You know, Governor Burgum re references lives and livelihoods very frequently. As though there's no effect on livelihoods, that's good with this graph, as though there's no effect on livelihoods for all of the people that work in restaurants and in bars, the people that manage them, that is a lot of people in the state. Those are people that are not earning their income, they're not able to bring home what's necessary to their families. You tell me that you're, you're protecting their livelihoods? Come on, give me a break, and you're doing it for no reason, as we've just seen in those graphs. Let's pull up the next graph, if we could, please. So now we're going to contrast a little bit here. Exactly. So this is North Dakota. We're going to pop through. There's four. We're looking at all surrounding states. Okay, this is North Dakota. Take a look at the curve. Green line is the mask mandate. Next, we've got South Dakota. Very similar curve. No mandate. Next, we've got uh, Minnesota. Now their curve's a little different because it's not dropping down, right. and yet... Look where their mask mandate was. Exactly. What kind of effect did that have on the curve? <laughs> None whatsoever. None. Now right. let's look at uh, Montana. So we've got the whole region here. Montana. Right. Basically the same. You've got the little like shoulder Minnesota. even there. The same as South Dakota and North Dakota. The little shoulder after the big drop. And look where their mask mandate is. Here they are all together. Take a look. There's, not, there's no statistical difference with the exception of uh, Minnesota not dropping quite as much. It doesn't matter whether you have a mask mandate. It doesn't. It doesn't matter when you had a mask mandate. The d disease goes through the community. But the and, mask and mandate moves on. does leave some pretty good carnage behind it. I mean, it, it doesn't matter with regard to COVID, but it does matter when you talk about the economy or when you talk about suicides or when you talk about despondency. I mean, it absolutely does. I mean, these are things. The, the idea is that, well, we have to do something. And I say to the, the bureaucrats uh, on the state level, and I say to Governor Burgum, no, you don't do something unless you know it's going to have a positive effect and only in the context of what you understand the ramifications are, the unintended consequences. Like you mentioned, suicide, failure to thrive. We brought that up before, the, the, the saddest dang thing ever. These elderly people dying of failure to thrive. Are you kidding me? It's brutal. It's just horrible. It makes me very, very sad. And you can die of loneliness. You can. You're not having any contact with people. It's horrible. It, it absolutely is horrible. And so this, this idea of, well, at least we're doing something. No, what you're doing is you're harming the economy, you're harming people's livelihoods, and you are harming people's lives. Right. Now, we had the opportunity to take a look at this before the mandate was put in place and to identify that it has not helped in other states. You can... You can Believe all you want that, that masks are going to be effective. At this point, I'm not arguing that. What I'm arguing at this moment is that we had an abundance of evidence of what happened in other states. Which, and theirs were a lot earlier than ours, so you're right. We had plenty of time to look at all the other right. data. So forcing restaurants and bars to close early, 25% capacity, forcing school sports to stop and practices to stop. Uh, I, I mean, <laughs> It's basically just throwing whatever you can at the wall and seeing what sticks without regard for people's lives and how disruptive it is, not to mention how it's tearing our communities apart by the maskers and the anti-maskers. And it, when it, in, in actuality, what it is is the people that want government to leave them alone right. because they recognize that it's not all that clear on what may or may not be helping versus those that are very readily willing to accept what, for instance, Governor Burgum is going to say uh, uh, what's best for the state. So comparing South Dakota, North Dakota, Montana, and Minnesota is a good choice because they're all in the same area of the country. There's similar yeah. lifestyles. There's a lot, you know, com to compare. I mean, that's a, that's a very similar thing. Very similar. And, and the, the, the upswings came roughly at the same time versus, say, the east or west coasts. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I don't know, I don't know how you can dispute those simple graphs which come from government agencies to say that there is clearly no evidence that the mask mandate in fact caused the downturn in North Dakota. I defy Governor Burgum if he says that's the case, he is wrong. He's either willfully saying the wrong thing or he misunderstands what actually caused the downturn.
So that's what we're, that's gonna take care of that topic <laughs> before I get even more angry. No, um, don't get angry. Don't get angry. All right, so next we're going to be talking to Bismarck chiropractor Steve Nagel and we'll talk a little bit about COVID with him. That's coming up next. Howdy folks, it's the Catalina Cafe. I reckon it's time you'll do for a hearty meal. So saddle up for the day with one of our hay boss and breakfast yeah. cow made soups. Fill your grill, add a salad bar, sink your teeth into our famous Catalina burger and barbecue ribs. Mm -hmm. Top it off with spur rattling pie with a roll that's sure to put a smile on even the toughest outlaws. Yeah. Shake the dirt off the boots each night and warm up with the game. Tell them about it, Stacy. I can't wait to see you at the county line. Capital City Restaurant Supply is your one-stop shop for quality restaurant products for the large to small kitchens. Commercial grade restaurant and bar supplies, limb game processing equipment, refrigeration, dinnerware, and smallware. We sell everything including the kitchen sink from trusted manufacturers for the chef and all of us. Open to the public since 1971, we are veteran owned and North Dakota proud. Let us take care of your restaurant and home kitchen needs today by visiting us at 1414 Interstate Loop in Bismarck or on the web at CapitalCityRestaurantSupply.com. Beck Communications is honored to be recently recognized with three Broadband Now Awards. Beck Communications Cooperative was awarded in the categories of Top Internet Speeds Nationwide, Top 3 Fastest Internet Providers in North Dakota, and North Dakota's Number 1 Fastest Fiber Provider. It's only through the support of our members and customers that Beck Fiber delivers award-winning speeds and service. Thank you, Beck Communications Cooperative members and customers, for your years of continued support. Introducing Accord Comfort Sleep Systems, a better way to sleep. We offer you five different models to give you the perfect choice of support and body comfort. Every model begins with our exclusive Accord Comfort Reflex Layer. This ensures proper spinal alignment and a deep down body relief. Our 8-inch Whisper Breeze provides a medium firm feel, and our 10-inch Gentle Night Model has a quilted top, giving you a medium plush comfort. Both use Outlast fabric on the top of your mattress, ensuring that your body temperature is not too hot and not too cold. Our Copper Rest Sleep Series is our premier mattress, offering your choice of firm, plush, and luxury plush. Every model uses copper-infused gel latex and provides all the health benefits of copper. Accord Comfort mattresses are handcrafted in the USA and come with a 60-night sleep guarantee. You're going to love sleeping with us. Order today exclusively at AccordSleep.com or Tom's Home Furnishings in beautiful downtown Harvey. Is your business phone system outdated and expensive to maintain? Most large VoIP companies leave you on hold or struggling through online support and training for your employees. With Beck Connect, you always have fast, friendly, local support. Familiar faces with the know-how to keep you connected. Take advantage of the newest technology in voice calling, video conferencing, and virtual meeting rooms. Beck Connect gives you all the features you need with no upfront investment and no obsolete hardware or software ever again. Simplify your communications. Choose local. Choose Beck Connect. Welcome back to No Apologies on Beck. We have a great show. Our guest, Dr. Steve Nagel, is with us this evening. He is uh, quite a dynamo. He's been involved in a lot of things tonight. He's going to talk to us about health and what we can do to perhaps mitigate some of the things going on, like COVID, flu, and what have you. But also, he happens to have been following uh, very closely what's going on with COVID and testing. He has uh, some people who have alerted him to some concerns. And so he's kind of been at the forefront. And we're going to talk about that first, Steve. Now, you yeah. had a letter that you drafted and sent to legislators. And it was yes. about some concerns regarding testing. Can you tell Correct. our viewers a little bit about that? So my background, so what we look for is transparency, right? We, we're a huge fan of transparency. And over the last few months, it just seems like there's a lot of things that are being hidden from the public and questions not being answered. I think you've experienced some of that yourself. Mm -hmm. And as well as a lot of censorship, every, everything from the media to even employees of these different places. And there's a lot of people reaching out, reaching out for um, and basically with things to say, but they're afraid to say it. And so 
since we've been taking a stand and standing out for people's freedoms, we've been getting different emails. And some of that has to do with, you know, whether they're people working in different labs or different healthcare facilities. And just like you said, I received an email in regards to um, what she was calling runs, like positive runs, where they run like 90 tests in a row and they would come up with like 30 in a row that were positive. And, she, and, and her comment was that this is not right. This should be random at, well, at, yes. at minimum. Yes, statistically that should it's not happen. <laughs> right, right, right. right. And she even went, to, went so far as said that she brought it to the attention of her managers and her coworkers and it was basically ignored, right? And so, and so to me that's extremely concerning. And so I, I wrote up concerns about PCR testing. Um, even, you know, Dr. Fauci, regardless of our feelings about him, um, he's even said anything over 35 cycle, a, a cycle count of 35, which basically looks at how much amplification of the signal there is, mm -hmm. anything over 35 is inaccurate. And we know that the Cepheid, when one of the systems, one of the tests that we're using here is testing everybody at 37, which creates a huge amount of what, what are considered to be false positives, meaning either the the virus itself isn't living anymore or the, the, their ability to transmit is extremely, extremely, extremely low. Right, I'm gonna, I wanna do one clarification because yes. you know, the, the folks at the lab, not the regular folks at the lab, but the, the upper management or the head of the lab will probably have heartache when you say they're false positives because they, with the amplification, it's still picking something up. Correct. So she will say it's not a false positive, it's a positive. But what we're referencing is is a functional false right. positive. Whether or not they're you, actually infectious. You might have had that you know one in a billion tiny little uh, strand of an RNA fragment of the virus, but you are nowhere close to being Correct. positive in the sense of being able to infect other people. So I just just to clarify, yep, what you and I are appreciate talking that. about as false yeah, positive is not laboratory false positive. It's it's useful because right. if you have I, a tiny bit of RNA but you can't, you're not sick and you won't ever infect other people, then nobody gives a crap. For all practical purposes, right. you're not positive. So just to clarify Absolutely. that. And, and the immune system has an ability to over, with time, after they've exposed, the farther it gets out, they inactivate it and then the body processes it out. And so a, what, when you get up to those high cycle counts, it's an inactivated form of that virus. Mm -hmm. It's viral particulate, debris basically. Yep, exactly. So the, um, did you get much of a response back from the legislators? Um, I, I've had a few um, respond back, um, not a whole lot of response. Um, we've been working with Josh Gallion somewhat, very um, trying to get something going from an audit perspective. But mm -hmm. I frankly think it would be good because if uh, I mean the a performance audit can serve as a as a QC check, a quality a quality check, and um, I think in light of the things that you've been hearing and what I've been hearing from lab people who don't want to be named for fear of losing their job, it's very concerning. Mm -hmm. Now, if all of it's not true, great. It's great. Then we, let's have the transparency and show us it's not true and there's nothing to worry about. I would like to know what made you start getting interested in checking on things like this. What was the impetus for you to decide, um, okay, you know what, I need to start ta talking about this and... Well, so, and we'll get more into that in the health section, but when we start looking at a positive or negative test, right, PCR testing is fairly new, right? And so I started to see some different reports about even the inventor of, of the PCR testing never really intended it to be for infectious, to, to diagnose or to declare an infection of somebody, mm -hmm. right? And, and so that's kind of where I guess from, a, from my background is in health restoration. And so we don't treat disease, we look at the human body and look at, and so everything I've learned about how the immune system functions, how it deals with bacteria, viruses, and that sort of thing, this wasn't making sense when people started saying, you know, well, they're only infectious for two weeks, but they're testing positive for 90 days or whatever the numbers have been. Yeah. It just wasn't adding up. Right. And then, you know, and, and like I consume a lot of research, I consume a lot of information. I probably bombarded you the last few days with <laughs> research articles there. so um and so the more you learn the more it's okay this doesn't necessarily this isn't adding up yeah well it is a it's a troubling thing when when people who are doing the tests are concerned that is that is very concerning to me and afraid to speak about and it. and afraid to talk about it yeah, yeah. because of the pressure put on that them. says a lot Correct.
It and, really does. You know, and getting to these numbers is important. People might say, well, who cares? What difference does it make? Because that doesn't change who's hospitalized or who dies. But it makes a tremendous difference because if all of these people that are deemed positive are in no way capable of infecting others, they're being sent home from work or school. If they're being sent home from school, the parents are being sent home from work to look after the kids. The people that were in contact with them are on isolation, I mean, or, or quarantine rather. It, it, there's, it's a never ending cycle. They're filling up the COVID units. Well, and that too. Right, you have people that may, maybe not, shouldn't be positive and shouldn't be there being exposed again. Maybe they have really depressed immune systems or an immune response for that that can't really mount in a response and they could potentially be reinfected, right? And so there's that whole aspect too of things of like, and, and just like you said, the biggest thing with our healthcare right now is a lack of personnel. Mm -hmm. And if these personnel are being sent home. Exactly, exactly. Say, so listen, can you hang with us for another segment? Because I want to get sure. to the, yeah. the health stuff. Absolutely. Okay, because, uh, yeah, we need a little something positive. <laughs> right. I'm always, Lori's <laughs> always bringing us down. i got to be the one to, to right. think positively. Sure. So um, I tell you what, we are going to be back in just a minute. We're going to talk more with Dr. Steve Nagel, and following that, we're going to have some brain food. See you back in just a minute. You just might find the home of your dreams this weekend by watching the Alliance Real Estate Tour of Homes Sundays at 6 p.m. and Wednesdays at 7 on Beck. Featuring properties from Bismarck, Mandan, Minot, and surrounding areas, the Alliance Real Estate Tour of Homes presents desirable properties that are for sale, lets you meet your Alliance Realtors, and provides critical insights into local happenings from community and business leaders. Join us this Sunday evening at 6 or Wednesday at 7 for the Alliance Real Estate Tour of Homes on Beck. Beck Communications is honored to be recently recognized with three Broadband Now Awards. Beck Communications Cooperative was awarded in the categories of Top Internet Speeds Nationwide, Top 3 Fastest Internet Providers in North Dakota, and North Dakota's Number 1 Fastest Fiber Provider. It's only through the support of our members and customers that Beck Fiber delivers award-winning speeds and service. Thank you, Beck Communications Cooperative members and customers for your years of continued support. He once won a spelling bee in an ancient language that he did not speak. He is the only man to ever earn extra credit on an IQ exam. His academic degrees are considered legitimate spending currency in 22 nations, two principalities, and at Chick-fil-A restaurants in the United States and Western Canada. I do not always engage with education programming, but when I do, it is The Dr. Duke Show. Stay educated with The Dr. Duke Show, weekdays at 4 p.m. on Beck News. Who do you trust with your digital life? Not all cloud backup providers keep your data truly private. Beck Cloud Backup uses advanced multi-layer encryption to keep your family photos, videos, and sensitive business documents secure and only for your eyes. Your Beck Lightband Internet service already includes 50 gigs of free storage to keep your digital life safe and secure. Call us at 701-475-2361 to start using your Beck Cloud Backup today. Introducing Accord Comfort Sleep Systems, a better way to sleep. We offer you five different models to give you the perfect choice of support and body comfort. Every model begins with our exclusive Accord Comfort Reflex Layer. This ensures proper spinal alignment and a deep down body relief. Our 8-inch Whisper Breeze provides a medium firm feel, and our 10-inch Gentle Night Model has a quilted top, giving you a medium plush comfort. Both use Outlast fabric on the top of your mattress, ensuring that your body temperature is not too hot and not too cold. Our Copper Rest Sleep Series is our premier mattress, offering your choice of firm, plush, and luxury plush. Every model uses copper-infused gel latex and provides all the health benefits of copper. Accord Comfort mattresses are handcrafted in the USA and come with a 60-night sleep guarantee. You're going to love sleeping with us. Order today exclusively at AccordSleep.com or Tom's Home Furnishings in beautiful downtown Harvey. Welcome back to No Apologies on Beck your after hours oasis of sanity. <laughs> I am your host, Rick Becker, our co-host, Lori Hintz, and our guest of the night, Dr. Stephen Nagel. So we talked yeah. COVID, 
Very interesting. We could probably have about another 15 segments. Easy. Oh, for sure. <laughs> and I have no doubt. But let's talk a little bit about health and yeah. what we can do maybe to mitigate right. COVID. Yeah. So, gosh, like you said, where do we even start, mm. right? <laughs> I think the, the, biggest, the biggest place a person can start is to start taking care of yourself, right? Start looking inward um, instead of looking at everybody else to take care of your health for you. Right, start t taking personal responsibility. And there's a massive amount of things that a person can do. Now, we see everything from the, the, the medication being treat, using to be treated with, for, for COVID itself, to even the, the take home, you know, the, the witch's cocktail, right, right, different yeah. things, right? Like it's pretty much everything and what was the best, but like everything in the kitchen sink, as mm -hmm. they say, right? And so the, the, the interesting and the, the thing about it is everybody's different, right? Everybody's health is different. Everybody's immune system is different. Right. There, and so before I even get into that, I want to preface that is, is if a person's not deficient in vitamin D, vitamin D is not going to help them. Sure. Right? If they're not deficient in zinc, zinc isn't going to help them. It's not going to be the magic fix. So in a, a lot about when we talk about health restoration, we talk about toxicity and deficiency, meaning what what different maybe environmental toxins are overwhelming our body's ability to deal with it or um, what sort of deficiencies are creating dysfunction in the body, right? And that's where we get into these different things. But yes, there are very, very things that are very highly correlated, right? We look at 94% of people that have been dying from COVID had some sort of comorbidity, right? And that is the big thing with this is Vir new viruses come into circulation all the time, right? We have thousands of different viruses and the body needs to learn how to deal with them. We can't keep kicking the can down the road using simply as our primary means of prevention, masks, you know, um, social distancing and hand washing, right? That's not gonna, that doesn't create a healthy immune response. In fact, a lot of the things we're doing today, like we, you had talked about in the first segment about you know, stressing out business owners, families, domestic dispute, domestic violence, these things create a massive amount of stress, right? So chemical we look at chemical, physical, and emotional stressors being, which lead to disease. And this is very much highly um, validated in even medical literature. It just gets ignored, right? And so I, I know we want to talk a little bit about vitamin D, right? So if we look at most people are actually deficient in vitamin D. And even Particularly when, in the Northern Plains, where we don't have a lot of sunshine yeah, like right? Florida. It's not like Arizona. Well, ironically, what, what the data shows is you need about two hours of direct sunlight with about 70% of your skin exposed every right. day. <laughs> <laughs> so I yeah. can kind of understand the deficiency in D. Right. Yeah, right. So, yeah, if you're not outside wearing a loincloth all day, <laughs> right, you're, you're going to be deficient. Were you looking over my face? <laughs> Thanks for that, guys. Thanks a lot for that visual, fellas. I know where you That's live. That's very nice. <laughs> <laughs> so... And so when we look at that, and, and when you look at the research, and this is always something that we, when, as, in a, as a clinician, we, we work on health restoration, right? Building a resilient, not only immune response, but a resilient body, right? And when you actually look to start to look at the data, your norms for health in vitamin D levels are from 50 to 100, um, even though the medical norms say about 30 to 100. Mm -hmm. What the research shows on viral infections is you need to be at least up over 50, right? And so making sure you're not just, and, and so there's degrees of sufficiency, right? Meaning 30 is enough to keep you from getting scurvy, but it's not enough to keep you from, from you know, when, when we talk about a robust, healthy immune response. Right. Um, things that affect vitamin D, right? Just like you said, sun exposure, right? Um, but if we're not getting enough sun, we need to be supplementing, right? Or eating foods um, like your, your salmon, your tuna, like your their, their different seafood are, are probably the best source. Um, there are other sources out there. Um, but even, even with that, right, how the body's absorbing it and how the body's able to store, right? We, we deal with so much toxicity in our environment today that our livers, most people's liver doesn't function at an optimal level. Vitamin D is actually stored by, by the liver. And so if your liver is not working as well as it could, it's going to be a really hard time to get those vitamin D levels where they should be. Steve, what is your best advice to someone who wants to get healthy, yeah. and do something proactive so that they can try to hold off the virus? I mean, Absolutely. So the square one thing, mm -hmm. cut out grains, cut out sugars. Those are the biggest two things a person can do, even with vitamin D. Right? There's an inverse relationship with 
not to get too technical, but if your body's having a poor time managing blood sugar levels, your insulin levels are gonna get high. There's an inverse relationship, meaning the higher your insulin levels, the lower your vitamin D levels are gonna stay. Right. And so that's where oftentimes we'll see people, hey, we're injecting 50,000 IUs of vitamin D twice a week, and their levels still stink, mm -hmm. right? And so when you start removing the things that interfere with the, Absorption that function, and function, right. yep. got it. And so looking at a non-inflammatory diet, removing stress from your life, right? <laughs> Managing stress, right? We know that even stress itself significantly increases your risk of respiratory infections, which is kind of ironic because wearing like an M9, there's research on M95 masks mm -hmm. that with, within five minutes increases the body's stress response. It's doing just the opposite of right. what you need. That's right. not helpful using, at all, using right? Using heart rate variability, right? right? So imagine all these people doing this all day, every day, right? Right. Um, and so, so those, I'm going to leave the when I'm having deer sausage. I'm going to skip yes. the bun. Yes, for sure. And yeah. I'm going to take vitamin D. You know, that's a great like. Just start paying attention to that, right? Start paying attention to um, the things that the small things a person can do. Sleep. Right. So growing up on a farm, like my dad's always like, I can't figure out why you'll eat a steak. Like just you know a big twelve ounce steak, but you leave the bread and like you don't do any of that. And I'm like, well, this is why listening. it's gonna, yeah. it's start gonna help to me, because I love you and I want you to be around, <laughs> right? And the thing is, this doesn't just go back to COVID. This goes back to general health, and 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 that's where we start. Have to start looking at the comorbidities, right? Why are why are some people surviving this thing? The most people and other people, it's I mean, it's been I mean, let's not let's be honest. It is killing some people, right? Mm -hmm. And so we start, have to start looking at that as to why that's happening, right? And what, what's different about those people? Um, Although it seems really random to me. I mean, it just seems so random. The people that I view as being super fit and exercising all the time, yep. those people are the ones who, you know, who should have really good, strong livers and they're having issues. Those people who you would think, you know, it's mm -hmm. very, it seems really random. Is there anything at all to blood type? Um, I don't get too much into that. Okay. We do a lot of blood testing in our office, mm -hmm. right? And one of the things we can actually test the immune system, right? Looking at, there's all this research on the T4, the, and my mentor, Dr. Flynn's been doing this for 10 years already, right? Looking at the T4, like this, your CD4 and CD8 counts, right? Looking at these different markers that will, can actually tell you how competent an immune, immune response you have and if you, get, if you can get tested, there's things a person can do to actually help to support that immune response, which is, yeah. Great. Pretty darn amazing. Right? <laughs> that's great. Um, and so, yeah, that's, mm -hmm. um, and, and so when we look at like different testing, that, that sort of testing would probably be the, and looking at other underlying health problems. I don't want to start a whole other subject, but it seems right. to me that it would be a smart idea to use some of the huge amounts of money that are going into mm -hmm. COVID response for prevention, I mean, am sure. I the only one who thinks this? I just, it seems to me that it would be far more helpful to educate people on, rather than on band-aids and masking, but to work. I'm thinking it was one of the Scandinavian countries sent, sent vitamin D out to all of the residents. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know if that's factual or not, but I'm thinking I read that, which, I mean, it would help a In, hell of a lot more than closing your bars at 10. Right. In one of the uh, one of the European countries, they are what they're doing is um, they're distributing vitamin D for free, and especially to long-term care facilities, mm -hmm. um, because the thing is, like most of those people are dangerously deficient. They've just never been appropriately tested. Sure. Right. You know, most people have never had a good test like to see that, um, and just like you said, like why aren't we putting more emphasis on the health of the host instead of one, worrying about the one virus out there of the thousands? That's been really rough on people. There's always going to be new viruses, right. and so, so, just 30 seconds left. Okay, people need to de-stress, need to sleep well, need to eat a better diet. In the northern climes, probably smart to take vitamin D. Probably a good amount, at least 5,000 units, um, at least 5,000 units a day. Now, like I said, it's ideal to get tested. Um, when people are deficient, sometimes we're doing like 20,000. Gotcha. Good to know. Well, Dr. Nagel with 180 Health Solutions, Chiropractic, thank you very much for joining us. Appreciate it was a pleasure. I'm sure helpful. we'll have you on again. Mm -hmm. I'd love to. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, we'll be right back with Brain Food. Brain Food. Catch you soon.
Bismarck Central, 4800. 4800, go ahead. Requesting social services on call team. Stand by. 4800, social services requesting additional information. You can advise social services that we have an 18-month-old female who was in a residence with a mother now being transported to medical care for overdose. Trusting your digital life to faceless tech giants can be risky. Will they keep your family and business information truly safe from prying eyes? If you subscribe to local Beck Lightband Internet Service, you already have Beck Cloud Backup. Beck Cloud Backup is the safest, most private cloud storage for all your family memories, schoolwork, and business documents. Call 701-475-2361 to start using your free space on Beck Cloud Backup today. You just might find the home of your dreams this weekend by watching the Alliance Real Estate Tour of Homes Sundays at 6 p.m. and Wednesdays at 7 on Beck. Featuring properties from Bismarck, Mandan, Minot, and surrounding areas, the Alliance Real Estate Tour of Homes presents desirable properties that are for sale, lets you meet your Alliance Realtors, and provides critical insights into local happenings from community and business leaders. Join us this Sunday evening at 6 or Wednesday at 7 for the Alliance Real Estate Tour of Homes on Beck. Today's households have more digital devices than ever before. More links to family, business, education, and entertainment. Beck Communications spent over 10 years building North Dakota's fastest fiber optic internet service. Beck Lightband Internet, outpacing speeds in large cities nationwide. Lightband Internet handles all your digital needs without throttling your connection to the world. Beck Communications, valuable digital connections in rural North Dakota. Howdy folks, it's the Caneline Cafe. I reckon it's time you're due for a hearty meal. So saddle up for the day with one of our hay boss and breakfast yeah. homemade soups. Fill your grill at our salad bar, sink your teeth into our famous Caneline burger and barbecue ribs. Mm -hmm. Top it off with spur rattling pie with a combo that's sure to put a smile on even the toughest outlaws. Yeah. Shake the dirt off the boots each night and warm up with the game. Tell them about it, Stacy. I can't wait to see you at the county line. Welcome back to No Apologies on Beck. It's time for brain food, food for your brain, nutrition for your intellect. I really like this segment just because there's so many possibilities with it, and I like to learn new things. Mm -hmm. All right, so. Me too, I'm interested. I, I know you have something well, yeah, th I'm about um, to learn here. I like, I like getting things from Mental Floss just simply because they use a lot of different sources. Well, this time it comes from Instagram, this one. Uh, the Royal Family's Christmas Figgy Pudding. And you've probably heard about Figgy Pudding. And just so you know, there you have it. That's what it looks like. It is Pudding is not the same in the UK as it is in the US at all. Think bread pudding. Uh, I had a sticky toffee pudding once. Um, by, at a place called Two Brewers Pub in Windsor. It was right in the shadow of Windsor Castle, and it was this lovely pub, and I had this, what I thought was pudding, and it was phenomenal, but it was a lot more like bread pudding. It's more like cake, think cake, rather than the mushy stuff that we have for pudding in the United States. But uh, the royal family has published its traditional recipe for figgy pudding, and they put it on uh, Instagram, so anybody can actually make this now, and this is what usually the queen gets fed. So I thought that was very interesting. It's traditionally the Sunday before uh, the Advent season that they start mixing things up and then they can make it later. Interesting. <laughs> it is. It's very interesting. I love interesting? bread pudding, so mm -hmm. I'd be interested to try Well, that. and figgy pudding too, or, they, or plum pudding, is not necessarily containing any plums or figs either. They use things like dried fruit and nuts and things like that, mm. which to me sounds like, you know, like that Christmas thing that you use as the doorstop thing. What is that called? Like, I don't know. The fruit cake. Fruit cake. I love fruit cake. I know. Well, this is not like that at all. It's a little mushier. I guess it's, it's the, the best description I have is bread pudding because it's a little 
more liquidy and not, but also cakey at the same gotcha. time. So that's delicious. Well, I'm going to confess, I saw what you were picking. <laughs> you did in as, advance. <laughs> as your first segment for brain food. Okay. And so I, I did a little dovetail off of that. So mine is Manhattan figgy pudding. Manhattan fig. Oh. Yeah. You can have a figgy pudding. So uh, I'll just give a little plug. You know, I've got a I've got a bar downtown called Luft. So anyway, we have cocktails on draft. You can just pour them right out. And this is a new one. They entered it into a contest. No idea if it won, um, but it's it's a figgy pudding flavored Manhattan. Yeah. Wow. So, so here's the thing. Okay. For our viewers, I want I want to let you know. So if you're if you're a young person and you want to surprise your parents when they come over for the holidays, or if you're Regardless of what age, if you're going to have people over and and you're tired of serving bush lattes, <laughs> here's here's what you can do, and you're going to you're going to impress your friends and family. So it's super easy. You've heard of Manhattans mm -hmm. and old fashions, right? You you really only need three ingredients, four ingredients if you want to serve either one. You can say, hey man, you want a Manhattan or an old fashioned? So what you need is whiskey, bourbon, rye, whatever you want. Okay, and it's one and a half ounce or two ounce, depending on how you like it. So you, you need whiskey, you need a dash of bitters. So you can just get those at your local liquor store, no big deal. Mm -hmm. The only thing that's different between a Manhattan and an old fashioned is in a Manhattan, you get some sweet red vermouth. You can get it at a liquor store, it's like four bucks a bottle. That's all you need and you can be serving Manhattans at your house. Or you can put a sugar cube in it, or if you don't like that, just mix a little sugar with water, it's called simple syrup. Pour that in, mix it to taste, and you've got an old fashioned. So just like that, you are a mixologist and you're gonna impress <laughs> your family and friends. Now, if you wanna impress them more, you need to do a, a little uh, orange peel, just oh, a little, yeah. Peel, just, yeah, just shave it right off, a little Fancy. orange peel for the old fashioned, mm -hmm. or a cherry for the Manhattan. Now, if you're gonna get a cherry, don't get the bright pink maraschino cherries. <laughs> you get Amarena cherries, or you get the high class maraschino cherries, which aren't the, the, the neon pink, okay? So take that to the bank, you're gonna impress everybody. Very helpful, you're that's welcome. awesome. Well, at least we're on the same wavelength with food and beverages yes. this time somewhat. So my, my second one tonight has to do with visions of sugar plums dancing in your head. So you've heard this phrase before, you know it from the nutcracker dance of the sugar plum fairy, but what exactly is a sugar plum? And I thought about that too, I'm not really sure. There's plums, but those are not sugar plums. Sugar plums are something completely different. The sugar plums English speakers ate from the 17th to the 19th century contain mostly sugar and not any plums. So they're basically confection. They um, were made by pouring liquid sugar over a seed, usually a cardamom or caraway seed, or an almond, by the way, and mm. allowing it to harden and then repeating the process. They call that uh, panning in candy making, and it creates these layers of hard sugar shells. And you've probably have heard of something uh, before with a uh, like an almond, where they have had an almond that's covered by this hard um, shell like that too. And they kept doing it until it was about the size of a plum, so it was a really nice treat for kids, I guess. Um, you can now buy these fancy candied plums um, now because they're like gummies and things like that that you can do that. But the one that's probably closer to actual sugar planes, uh, sugar, sugar plums is a Jordan almond. So a Jordan almond is an almond that is dipped, panned, and it's got sugar over it, sugar. It looks kind of mm. like, if you ever see it, it looks kind of like a peanut M&M in a pastel color or in white. If you've ever seen those candied almonds, that's kind of what sugar plums are. So, Very interesting. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. There, I'm teaching you. Okay, I'm gonna go just slightly different tack here. Okay. Okay. William Woods Holden was the North Carolina governor in 1886, or I'm sorry, 1868 to 1871. All right. He was a Republican. So he had an interesting situation down there. This is the time of the Civil War, post-Civil War. Mm -hmm. And the Ku Klux Klan was very, very, very powerful down there. In North Carolina. In North Carolina. And they were out doing lynching. They even lynched an Afri African-American police officer. Oh, how awful. Um, they were taking over. So this Republican governor, William Woods Holden, call called out the state militia and essentially went to war with the Ku Klux, Ku Klux Klan. Klan. Wow. Yeah. 
And so he was trying to bring a little, you know, uh, um, sanity back to their state, stop these evil clanners. Mm -hmm. um, and I think he was largely successful, except in uh, 1871, the Democrats took power in the state. Okay. And what they promptly did was impeached him and charged him with high crimes and misdemeanors for going to war against the Klan. Really? Yes. That seems odd. <laughs> so. Well, and it's important to know history. Okay. That the Klanners historically were of a party that now claims that racism derives from being in the Republican Isn't Party, that? whereas at the time that it actually meant something, the Republicans were on the side of uh, protecting, Law and order and protection. Minorities, right. Oh, how interesting. Yeah. That is a great story. I like it. Well, Good thank to know. you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I think that's going to do it for Brain Food. I hope you feel nourished. Uh, we will be back shortly. We're going to talk about Iran. What in the world is going on over there? We'll be right back. Stick with us. You just might find the home of your dreams this weekend by watching the Alliance Real Estate Tour of Homes Sundays at 6 p.m. and Wednesdays at 7 on Beck. Featuring properties from Bismarck, Mandan, Minot, and surrounding areas, the Alliance Real Estate Tour of Homes presents desirable properties that are for sale, lets you meet your Alliance Realtors, and provides critical insights into local happenings from community and business leaders. Join us this Sunday evening at 6 or Wednesday at 7 for the Alliance Real Estate Tour of Homes on Beck. He once won a spelling bee in an ancient language that he did not speak. He is the only man to ever earn extra credit on an IQ exam. His academic degrees are considered legitimate spending currency in 22 nations, two principalities, and at Chick-fil-A restaurants in the United States and Western Canada. I do not always engage with education programming, but when I do, it is The Dr. Duke Show. Stay educated with The Dr. Duke Show, weekdays at 4 p.m. on Beck News. Howdy folks, it's the Caroline Cafe. I reckon it's time you're due for a hearty meal. So saddle up for the day with one of our hay boss and breakfast yeah. homemade soups. Fill your grill, add a salad bar, sink your teeth into our famous Caroline burger and barbecue ribs. Mm -hmm. Top it off with spur rattling pie with Comro that's sure to put a smile on even the toughest outlaws. Yeah. Shake the dirt off the boots each night and warm up with the game. Tell them about it, Stacy. I can't wait to see you at the county line. Introducing Accord Comfort Sleep Systems, a better way to sleep. We offer you five different models to give you the perfect choice of support and body comfort. Every model begins with our exclusive Accord Comfort Reflex Layer. This ensures proper spinal alignment and a deep down body relief. Our 8-inch Whisper Breeze provides a medium firm feel, and our 10-inch Gentle Night model has a quilted top, giving you a medium plush comfort. Both use Outlast fabric on the top of your mattress, ensuring that your body temperature is not too hot and not too cold. Our Copper Rest Sleep Series is our premier mattress, offering your choice of firm, plush, and luxury plush. Every model uses copper-infused gel latex and provides all the health benefits of copper. Accord Comfort mattresses are handcrafted in the USA and come with a 60-night sleep guarantee. You're going to love sleeping with us. Order today exclusively at AccordSleep.com or Tom's Home Furnishings in beautiful downtown Harvey. Capital City Restaurant Supply is your one-stop shop for quality restaurant products for the large to small kitchens. Commercial grade restaurant and bar supplies, limb game processing equipment, refrigeration, dinnerware, and smallware. We sell everything including the kitchen sink for trusted manufacturers for the chef and all of us. Open to the public since 1971, we are veteran owned and North Dakota proud. Let us take care of your restaurant and home kitchen needs today by visiting us at 1414 Interstate Loop in Bismarck or on the web at CapitalCityRestaurantSupply.com. Welcome back to No Apologies on Beck. We are at the last segment of the evening, so sad, but I know you're <laughs> going to stick with us through this one. Well, this one is kind of a heavy topic, too. It's not a real light and fluffy topic. It's pretty meaty and it's also actually kind of it's frightening, <laughs> to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. it is, we're going to talk a little bit about the Iran and Israel conflict. And it's been going on, as everyone knows, forever, as long as anyone can remember. Um, but the, uh, the, the thing that precipitated me even 
bringing this topic up was the fact that there was an assassination recently. Just a, it was, I think it was the day after Thanksgiving this happened and I, it caught my eye because I thought, uh-oh, anytime there is sort of, of tension and things going on in the Middle East, that means it's going to have far-reaching uh, uh, ramifications for where, wherever you are, and especially in the United States, we're always keeping our eye kind of on Israel and particularly Iran. We have a long history of having issues with Iran as well. So uh, this guy's name was Dr. Mohsen Fekhrizadeh. I practice. Gesundheit. You're welcome. And uh, he was assassinated in broad daylight, uh, and it was on the outskirts of Tehran. And Israel neither confirms nor de denies their role in this. Now, the interesting thing about this to me was that it was in broad daylight. It was very bold, and Bibi Netanyahu, or Benjamin Netanyahu, had talked about it previously. He'd said something two years prior in 2018 in April. He mentioned this guy by name, and then two years later, he just magically gets assassinated. But Israel is not coming clean on this at all. Right. Well, I, uh, there's so much that goes into play with the U.S. and what's happening in the U.S., the election with the presumptive uh, uh, next president, Joe Biden, I know you don't want to hear that, but with Joe Biden coming in, what that means where Biden wants to get back into the treaty in the Iran with deal. Iran, yeah. and, and so the, the, it basically it's 3D chess that Israel is trying to play. What can they do to try and, and get things in line in, with Iran before that might happen? Whatever they do is going to have an impact on what uh, uh, Trump does now, what Biden does later. I mean, everything is on edge right now. It is. It's, a, it's a really tough situation because you've got one country, ostensibly, if Israel did, and we don't, I don't doubt that probably Israel managed to do this. And it was a drone strike type of thing, too. And if you, yeah. if you take a look at the picture of the vehicle, it looks, it reminds me a little bit of the whole Soleimani thing because uh, this, as you remember, the last at least four assassinations have been undertaken already this year under the protection of Iranian security services who must be having a really bad day because these guys cannot protect no. diddly at this point. And if you remember, the U.S. drone strike was the one that got Soleimani uh, in January of this year. So since then, four of them... Uh, have been taken out for assassinations. Um, that's a good picture of, of uh, Qasem Soleimani. And uh, you've heard the president talk many, many times, okay, we got rid of this mm -hmm. terrible, terrible fellow. And it was very clandestine and it was also very um, precise. They, these are precision strikes. So this one, this, this particular scientist was a leading Iranian scientist, and so he was working on the nuclear program, which means taking him out of, ostensibly would just squash any type of, right. you know. Well, and that's why it makes sense that Israel did it. Right. Uh, because Iran is saying, we're going to blow you, Israel, off the face of the planet, and so, it, you know, get the guys that are behind the development of nuclear armaments. So, I mean, that makes total sense. I, um, the big thing for me is trying to figure out how far Iran is going to push it because they have elections coming up exactly. in June. Exactly. And they are working between the moderates and the extremists. Right. We don't know who's going to come out ahead. What happens between now and then with U.S.? and what we do if there is an escalation with Iran. And if we're they try in limbo right now politically. We're actually between everything. So right. there's so much unrest. It's a real dangerous situation. And that's what kind of made me look into it a little bit as yep. well. Absolutely. And very much what we do as the United States, as a country, will have a significant impact on whether the moderates or the extremists win in Iran in June. And that's going to have a huge effect on the entire region. Exactly. Well, Trump is actually by far the most friendly to Israel president that we've ever had oh, in yeah. my lifetime no that I could that. ever remember. I mean, the fact that he reinstated the Jerusalem and the, and the embassy in Jerusalem is just, it's phenomenal. I never thought I would see that in my lifetime. I really, really didn't. And then when he was able to do that, it was just thrilling to me because I thought, okay, this is something completely different than we've seen in, in foreign affairs ever, ever before. Yeah. 
Do you ever think back on how things would be different if we hadn't taken out uh, uh, Iraq? Uh, right. Who am I thinking of the leader in Iraq, for goodness sake? Oh, Saddam Hussein. Yes, if we hadn't taken out Hussein, because they, they, uh, Iraq kept Iran in check. Right. I don't know. I mean, it, it can't be the world's policeman, but now, of course, anytime we involve ourselves in other world affairs and try and implement what we think is best, we end up screwing it up, I think. But not, you're not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yep, that's so true. we'll see what happens, but yeah, it's it's a it's an interesting little tidbit of a story with Just the assassination. Just keep your eye on that because there's all sorts of stuff that's probably gonna, there's a lot of tension right huge now. Huge so. global, huge, huge, huge global implications. Right. Um, so yeah, well, I'm probably reporting on that here in the next couple of <laughs> we months. We might I be would too. Imagine. So on the next show, we will yes. have an interesting topic. We will. <laughs> What is our next topic? I don't know. I thought you were. I'm tossing it to you. Uh, let me see what I can find here. No, I was gonna. I was going to. Oh yeah, uh, we are going to be talking about Bastia. Oh yeah, yeah. Remember, yeah, yeah. we're gonna talk about Bastia. Yeah, that's my thing. <laughs> Bastia, the Bastia Caucus. We're going to be talking all about that. You guys are going to love it. It's very interesting. It gets a little press. It's something going on in the legislature. Uh, I'll be cluing you in on that. And I have an announcement. How could I possibly forget? It's a very interesting announcement. It's regarding law enforcement. You're not going to want to miss it. So uh, come back, visit us tomorrow, catch another episode of No Apologies. And next on Beck, you are about to see No Filter with Debbie. We'll see you next time.